Now, joining us from Australia is Syrian Girl. She goes by that. Her name is now known. She's been on national uh, Australian uh, television. Uh, and Syrian Girl comes from a former ruling class family that was deposed by the Bathurst coup and thrown out by Assad's father. So, and, and, they're, and they're also Sunni folks, but they don't like Al-Qaeda, obviously. She's 100% Syrian to the core, an activist and career student. Uh, and her opinion of the Syrian government, I have no illusion in, my, in any government around the world. And uh, her Twitter handle is Partisan Girl, YouTube, Syrian Girl Partisan, youtube.com forward slash Syrian Girl Partisan. I want to get her breakdown because she's been on with us for over a year and a half now. How time flies since early 2013. And everything she said turned out to be incredibly accurate. She has sources inside Syria. Obama says no boots in the ground, even though there are boots in the ground. He says he's going to give billions of dollars uh, to the, quote, rebels to fight the bad rebels. When we know the rebels will just fight Assad and the government. Uh, and so I want to get her view on this because it's so bizarre to see them using the public's ignorance about the players to actually launch a new war in Syria they couldn't get a year ago because our military said, no, we're not going to be the Air Force of Al-Qaeda. Well, a year later, change the name to ISIS and then claim you've got to stop ISIS by arming ISIS. Uh, Syrian girl, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me again, Alex. Um, I just want to reiterate what you said. You know, it's, it's not about... Uh, the Syrian government, I have no illusions, as you said, in any government around the world. But at a time where your borders are being breached, um, you have nobody to turn to but your army to defend you. And that's where I'm coming from. Um, with my family, uh, my grandfather was deposed from power, but we were never really kicked out of the country. I just wanted oh, well, I'm to... I'm sorry to get that wrong, but, but I mean, I mean, you left the country. You left the country. Yes, we did. Oh, but thank you for, you know, your introduction. And I want to like uh, talk about uh, Obama's recent speech and everything surrounding that. You know, last time uh, I was here a year ago, we were facing the same scenario of Syria being uh, possibly attacked. Only at that time, the excuse that was being used was chemical weapons. And it seems that uh, the um, there's only three sort of options that the U.S. government will use as an excuse for war. Either it's regime change, WMDs, or chemical weapons, whatever you want to call it, or back to the good old faithful fighting terrorism bit. And it seems that the fighting terrorism bit is the easiest one to sell. Um, and they think that we have goldfish memories that we haven't noticed that for the last three years they've been supporting Al-Qaeda in Libya and Syria and wherever else. Um, and the, the biggest irony as well is that even though the, the groups that they're supporting have been burning and tearing down churches, Obama recently met with uh, Christian minorities, Syrian minorities, and tried to win them over. And in that conference, he actually admitted that Assad has been protecting Christians for the last few years. So um, it's, it's quite funny, but most of the uh, government officials that attended that conference got booed off the stage by uh, the Syrian Christians who asked Obama, in that case, then why have you been supporting these so-called you know, moderate rebels? Um, Last year, when I was he here on your show, I said that the chemical weapons were a deterrent. And now that they're gone, um, it would leave us open for an attack. And I also said that uh, the U.S. government wouldn't attack Syria until they were gone. And I think that that proved to be true. I also uh, uh, said that the Syrian air defenses were quite strong and that would prevent a U.S. airstrike. And of course, at the time, Dempsey was saying that um, we can't have airstrikes against Syria, we can only have kinetic strikes, which means launching missiles from boats. And uh, it seems now that the ISIS terrorists have been taking out Syrian air defenses in the northeast of the country in Takba Air Base. And I tweeted out days before Takba Air Base fell to ISIS that as soon as the air base falls, and that means that Syria's air defenses fall with it, then we're going to start hearing about the U.S. Uh, uh, government and Obama saying he wants to attack Syria. And that is exactly what's happened. You know, I run, like interestingly, around the same time was when the two American journalists were beheaded. And uh, Obama is basically using the fact that ISIS uh, killed these two journalists to whip up support for war and to, you know, get people really angry. Um, but interestingly, the family of these uh, of Sotlov, one of the journalists that was killed, 
said that the moderate rebels that Obama is trying to help actually sold Foley to ISIS. It's uh, a real shock. Um, it is, and know, I had Colonel Schaefer on, who was at Capitol Hill that day, just a few days ago, and he said, look, it's way over 65% of the rebels that are really Al-Qaeda. And, and, of course, we're not demonizing Sunnis here that are 79% of Islam. You yourself are, 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 are Sunni. Uh, it's, it's that this Saudi Arabian-backed group literally is there to, to, to deindustrialize and shut down any country. And when I said you got your family got kicked out of the country, I meant that as a paraphrase of, of saying you aren't allies with Assad when you are defending the regime and the army because, uh, I mean, that just adds to your credibility uh, and, and it shows how accurate you've been the last few years speaking out. Well, I have no personal gain and my family has no personal gain in this position. It's just, uh, frankly, just observing the truth and observing the news for for not just the last three years, but the last few decades and even um, before September 11. So it's all part of the, the wider plot of everything. And of course, I was also an avid watcher of your show. I like to say that when I was a teenager. Um, so that helped me wake up to everything that was going on in the world and really opened my eyes to all the agendas. Um, and really, I, I guess I would like to just go back to um, the story of the two journalists who were beheaded yes. and the media's reaction um, to it, which I thought was really jarring because um, so many Syrians have been beheaded by these Al-Qaeda groups for the last three years and Syrian soldiers as well. Um, the media's reaction to these two men being beheaded was outrage. But um, when Time magazine and, and they asked people not to watch it, they censored images of sort of to get people's imagination going. But then they, if you look at uh, last year, Time magazine gave an award for journalists, photographs and videotape of a Syrian soldier being beheaded. And that was one of like Time magazine's top 10 images. So that's the kind of treatment that you get as a Syrian. You know, we're seen as subhuman sheep to the slaughter, and it's just a great story to watch us get beheaded, but nothing to be outraged about. Um, I don't think the U.S., like, with the history of what's happening, I don't think anybody should take seriously the idea that they really wanted to want to fight ISIS. I think it's an excuse to intervene in Syria to keep the chaos going and to eventually balkanize Syria into different uh, pieces. You know, if they really, really wanted to fight ISIS, then they would stop their ally and NATO member Turkey from giving ISIS refuge on the Syrian-Turkish border. They not only give them refuge, they give them medical treatment and they allow them through the border. You know, Turkey actually came out and said, I'm not going to take part in allowing my airways to be used against ISIS. And that's because there's so many ISIS individuals inside Turkey now that Turkey's afraid that they're going to start causing problems. And of course, Turkey has an agenda to support ISIS. Um, the Turkish government war room leaks actually had the Turkish uh, government officials on record saying they would like to use ISIS in a false flag operation to start a war with Syria. That was uh, last year. So uh, again, you know, one of the US's allies in the region, Israel, has been giving medical aid to uh, the FSA and Jabhat al-Nusra on the Syrian Golan Heights border. And uh, actually, Netanyahu went and visited them. And these Jabhat al-Nusra rebels actually kidnapped UN peacekeepers recently on the Israeli border, the Filipino ones. Where was the international condemnation for that? And interestingly, Qatar, another US ally, has influence enough with Jabhat al-Nusra to actually get these UN officials out. So the fact is, we haven't really heard about Jabhat al-Nusra anymore, which was one of the other groups that the US said were terrorists. And the interesting part about that is um, the fact that the FSA, who we are calling the moderate rebels, came out and said, you know, we have no problem with Jabhat al-Nusra. We are um, still fighting alongside them and they're not, you know, it's fine. So that's why you don't really hear about it anymore, because now there's some kind of a little bit of friction between FSA and ISIS. However, the FSA is still working with alongside ISIS in Arsal on the Lebanese border. You wouldn't hear that, but I would suggest you anybody check out uh, Paul Joseph Watson's article, which I was, you know, partly a source for, describing example about how the moderate rebels 
are working with ISIS and are still working with them and how some of the FSA battalions that moderate rebels have defected to ISIS, have sold weapons to ISIS, and of course have sold American journalists to ISIS. So if they really, really wanted to fight ISIS, they wouldn't be helping these group of people that have been defecting and selling weapons to ISIS. And they wouldn't be trying to undermine the Syrian army who are the only force capable of fighting ISIS in the entire region. You're because, right. Of course, the Iraqi army was dismantled. And if you just and joined us, Syrian girl is joining us from Australia. There's a little bit of a delay. And that's exactly what Colonel Schaefer said, who was in Congress uh, two days ago when he joined us, briefing members of Congress saying you should join with Assad and the army and offer to clear out ISIS if you really want to get rid of them. He said, arming any of the rebels arms Al-Qaeda. They're basically all Al-Qaeda. They've just changed the name to confuse the public. I don't see how the establishment is going to get away with this one way or another. And what will the army do? What will the Assad regime do when U.S. aircraft or NATO aircraft start bombing? How will they sell bombing Assad forces or the Assad forces fire on the coalition aircraft? Because they're there giving air cover and, and uh, arming the uh, rebels that are clearly going to be attacking the government? You're, that's an excellent, excellent question. You know, um, first of all, like any patriot would, we could, we all reject any breach of Syrian so sovereignty, no matter what excuse, whether it be fighting ISIS or, you know, fighting purple dragons. I mean, what do you expect to unfold now that we're going to stop the rebels by arming them, but they're the good rebels are not Al-Qaeda. And our own military knows that's not true. Our own military, generals and colonels and others that I've talked to on and off record, are very upset about this. It's all about a pipeline that's going to run up through Syria with natural gas and cut off Russia. Okay, great, but America won't even make money off that. Plus, it's immoral. It's blocking free market stuff. If they want to have a pipeline, pay Assad pay the government, pay the people for using it. I mean, you just can't send Al-Qaeda in to blow up all the churches uh, because uh, they'll let you have a pipeline. It's so immoral. Well, absolutely about the pipeline. I mean, that, that's going to be the region that runs right through uh, the ISIS-controlled areas right now. And the idea is just to keep that area destabilized indefinitely and cut up Syria into lots of different pieces so that you can never have like a viable state there that you can, uh, with stability, that you can run a pipeline through. You know, the Syrian FM said that ISIS doesn't need any more airstrikes. The Syrian Air Force can take care of that. But uh, what we really need is for the money flow and the training to stop. And what this uh, Obama's uh, mission now, it's just going to strengthen ISIS and make it uh, sort of a, a continuous thing, you know. Um, and it's very dangerous as well because the Russians and the Chinese have come out and said, you can't do this without a UN resolution. This is a breach of sovereignty. And you know, things might escalate if a Syrian uh, Air Force shoots down an American plane or the American plane sh shoots some uh, Syrian army as well. You know, this could actually escalate as it did last year with, with some kind of uh, a World War III scenario where Iran and Israel and, and Russia gets involved. Um, you know, people don't want that. We don't want that. You know, we've already suffered enough war. We want to see things over. You know, we want to protect our sovereignty and our borders. Um, and I, I did want to mention as well, just uh, totally changing the subject a little bit, but um, on my channel, the uh, conversations of the journalist that was beheaded, Sotlov, um, in the leaked Syrian Electronic Army emails reveal that uh, one of the the uh, insurgent, the American insurgent, Matthew Van Dyke, who went to fight in Libya, actually told him that he had information that the Syrian rebels actually had chemical weapons and used them in Aleppo. And Sotlov was interested in writing a story about this before he was kidnapped. You'd find details about that on my channel. But just goes to show you that... Um, you know, any any excuse would would do, and it, the the U.S. just wants a war and the instability in that region, no matter which side they're on, and no matter who they're bombing. It, it doesn't matter if they're not on any side, just so long as they're they're in there selling right. weapons and you know creating the chaos. Mimi Alahim, thank you so much for spending time with us. We'll obviously be talking to you in the next few weeks as this unfolds. I hope our military again says no to this. <laughs> Oh. <laughs>
Nascent iodine is so important because it goes directly to the thyroid. It's not bonded to a salt, which means it doesn't have to be broken down. And it's the most usable form. It's what the body uses. It's what the body is designed to use. If you have low energy levels, if you have pains, if you have thyroid problems, if you don't feel up to par, well, they've proven now that the fluoride and a lack of iodine causes a decreased IQ because you have all this stuff that builds up inside your system and builds up and builds up. And that's why some people, when they start taking iodine, will have what's called a Hertzheimer reaction or a detoxification reaction. But that's a good sign. That means you're detoxifying all that fluoride buildup, the mercury buildup in there, the bromine buildup in your system, and the chlorine buildup in your system. You don't want those things. All of those things have been proven as carcinogens. That's one of the reasons prostate cancer is on the rise, too, is because prostate takes up iodine. And the men that are lacking iodine causes the prostate to become cystic and causes the prostate to swell and eventually leads to prostate cancer. There's been an extreme rise in polycystic ovarian disease, PCOS, with women, fibrocystic breast disease, because iodine is stored in the breast tissue, the ovaries, the prostate glands in men. It's utilized by every single cell in the body. Mm, why does this almost taste good compared to other iodine that tastes horrible? That's because it's real iodine atomic form. We wanted something that's going to go straight into the bloodstream and straight into the thyroid gland. We wanted to put it in a vegetable glycerin base. That's a USP kosher certified vegetable glycerin base. And that product is not tested on animals. It's vegan friendly. It's gluten free. It's GMO free. Of all the things I've done, nascent iodine was just absolutely amazing. So we developed with Dr. Group a double strength, low price. InfoWars Life. Dot com survival shield the atomic nation iodine available right now